Hey all, it's Mike from Anything Scout here. Uh, today's tech tip video, we're going to show you how to replace a blower motor and a heater core in a Scout 2. So we're gonna start with what we need to do to replace heater core and a blower motor in a Scout 2. Uh, I've taken the heater, heater box out of the Scout 2 um, it won't be necessary if you're just doing a heater, uh, a blower motor, but a heater core might be easier. In this case, I just took it out because we're going to show you how to do both. Um, things you're going to need is obviously a blower motor that we sell here that you can get from us. Also, a new heater core that we're going to install that you need to, that you're going to need. Um, I have some seals that we'll get to later, uh, how to seal up the heater core to the heater box. Um, tools are pretty easy, uh, screwdriver, uh, Allen wrench, something to scrape, razor blade, uh, socket, and crescent wrench will I get to later. Uh, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, just take apart the heater box so we can see what we got, see what we need, see what we need to do. So I'm going to start with the heater core here. Um, our new heater core comes with, as you notice, the fittings for the hose uh, on the old one are curved. This is a factory styled one. Uh, the replacement ones are straight. So when I take this apart, this is a bracket here that goes on here. We're not going to reinstall that, but I would keep that around in case you ever go back to find this styled heater core. So first, there's just Phillips screws here that we're going to take apart. Keep your hardware because we will reuse it. This is what we will not reuse, but you can keep it around. You could reinstall it if you wanted to. Um, but I usually don't. So you're replacing your heater core probably because you have a leak. Coolant runs through there and it may have formed a leak and you are probably replacing it for that reason. So we're going to slide the heater core out. Notice you have foam strips here. That's why I have those foam strips we'll reuse. So I'm going to set this down right over here. There, simple enough. Heater core is now removed. And well, we're gonna go ahead and now remove the blower motor. Blower motor's on this side. We have a, uh, a cup that goes on the end of the blower motor. Um, we will reuse this, so we're gonna take this off and save the hardware. So, reasons you're gonna be replacing your blower motor is, is uh, it's not working anymore. Um, you will, Check for power and ground. Um, your ground is actually right here. Power, uh, low and high speed. Wires here, you would check. And if that is not working, this is the reason you'd be replacing your blower motor. So again, this is a ground wire that comes with the motor. We'll have a new one. So we're gonna take the hardware off again. Okay. Moving the blower motor, we have what we call the blower motor cage. So the cage we're gonna end up reusing. Um, it's in fine shape, it looks like. Uh, if not, uh, we do sell new ones and you would uh, uh, get a new one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish taking apart the blower motor because as you see, the blower motor, we need to replace, uh, swap over a couple parts here to the new one. So I'm gonna use an Allen wrench. And here's a good, what happens is it will stick on the uh, shaft here. So we're gonna have to uh, tap this off and I need to go get a hammer to do that. So bear with me just a second. 
got my hammer. And now we're gonna try to tap this. What I do is I kind of pick up and hold it up in the air like this, not real stable. But then I'm gonna whack it right here and it would be actually on the end of the blower motor shaft. See if we can get this cage off of there. Now I'll need to go get someone else to help me. Once again, we need some lube. And there he goes. <laughs> so in this is instance, you can do one of a couple things. We can try to heat this up to try to knock this loose. We can um, use a new cage uh, because, you know, that's why we sell them because this, and this happens. Uh, so what we're going to do is probably just get a new cage for this. All right. Dilemma. So we got a new cage off the shelf, not a new cage, a different cage off the shelf. Um, so it is usable, so we can put this one back together right now. We also have this back plate, but before we put the back plate on, we have to put this gasket on. So this gasket goes over the studs like so. So we'll slide those on. This backing plate will slide on. And we're gonna use the these nuts. <laughs> All right, so before I put my cage on, um, there is no seal that goes between here and the case. Some people do put some things on there. I don't like to do that. That's not the way it came. So I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have anything interfering. Okay, on the shaft, flat spot is where our set screw is going to be for the cage. So we're gonna slide that on, like so. And then tighten up our set screw. Okay, cage is on nice and tight. All right. So we can assemble the blower motor back in the case. Actually, now's a good time since the case is completely empty to go over a few things with the case. So again, I'm going to just kind of, no gaskets ever been, were, was used in this, so I'm just going to make sure it's somewhat flat. You have an air inlet door right here, okay? And there is some rubber that is on that. It acts as a seal as it closes. Okay, yours may be torn or maybe missing. Now is a good time to uh, replace that if necessary. This one is really good, in really good shape. All you would do is find some maybe eighth inch piece of rubber, cut it about like so, and then they use staples of the factory to do it. As you can see, really hard to staple through that. So what I end up doing is putting that and uh, using sheet metal screws to secure the new piece of rubber on it. All it has to do is go and, and go to close there. Now, there's also a screw right here that acts as a door stop for this door. So the door wouldn't come completely all the way over into the fan. So it being right there, you can see, just make sure that screw's in there. If it's not there, you need to get a screw and put in there. Because it's important you don't want your door to go over and end up into the fan. So, other things I look for now with the case with it being empty. Um, all these flanges that mount up to the vehicle, I try to make sure if they're straight or not. And if they're not straight, I try to stra I, I straighten them. So, these are in really good shape, but how you would straighten it is using a crescent wrench and sliding it over there and you can use it to bend it, to bend straight. So I check this flange, looks good. And I also go this one here that mounts up to the inner fender. This one is a little bent in the corner. 
So I can go ahead, bend it back, straightens it out some. Also, I'm gonna shake the dust out. Good idea. Get all the debris out. Sometimes you have leaves, uh, mice droppings, whatever else in there, whatever the mice took in there. Uh, some of these boxes, uh, this back panel was screwed on. Some of them, they were, they were welded on, tacked on. This one was tacked on, so I don't have to do anything with this. Um, but if it was uh, screwed on, make sure all the screws are on there and screws are tight because you wouldn't want this to come loose, then you lose air movement. Inside, you want to look at the bottom to make sure we're not rusted completely through and we have holes. We got a little bit of surface rust, but it looks pretty good. This box overall is in pretty decent shape. Could use a bath, maybe. So, blower motor's ready to go back in. Uh, cage is on. So, I'm going to slide this in and we are going to line up some holes. I like to have my wiring point down. This would be down. This would be the top of the vehicle. So um, it's out of the way. So I'm gonna hand start just a couple of these. Remember I said no gasket on this. They didn't come that way, so I don't put them back that way. Okay, we're gonna get to the point where I told you we have this ground. Pretty important, your blow motor will not work unless it's grounded. It grounds through the case, which grounds through the body. So, it has a black wire, it's a ground wire, and it has a little eyelet on it. And we're just gonna go straight to our last screw. Now, here's my little, my little tip. I use a star washer behind the eyelet so it kind of scratches as I tighten and it, per it has a good ground, provides a really good ground for it. So I'll take my screw, go through the eyelet, put my star washer on it, hopefully, there we go. And then we're gonna start it. Boom. It's tight. The star washer's dug into the metal, scratched it up. Now it's gonna have a really good ground, so that's not gonna be an issue. Now that I've got them all started, I'm just gonna go around, and snug them all up. Don't over tighten them. You could strip out the screw, and then that will never, then you have to use like a, a bigger screw. So we're down to putting this outer cup back on. Oop, there it is. Blow motor is now installed in your in your heater box. Now that the blow motor is in its case, we are going to wire uh, get the wires ready to be reassembled into the vehicle. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. Um, the way we do it here is we go ahead and put new terminals and a new connector on. Um, you can get these. Uh, some people can't uh, have troubles finding them or, or getting them, so we, there's another way you can do it. You could cut the old ones and leave yourself a pigtail. And then you can wire it directly to this. If you do that, do not use a butt connector that, that has no heat shrink tubing on it. Um, water and moisture will get in here. It'll corrode that, and then you'll have issues down the road. So if you go about doing it that way, use a butt connector and use some shrink tube over the top of it. That way it'll be weather tight. Okay, I'm gonna show you how we do it here at Anything Scout. Um, we're gonna use these new terminals and put a new connector on. So these, these are already stripped back, but they're a little long for what I need, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off. Put the terminal on there. Mm 
So the orange is your high and the red is your low side. Um, so your orange will go in this top one. And your red will go in your bottom one. And there you go. All right, now we're gonna reinstall our new heater core. Um, so we're gonna turn the box around. So, you can't just set your heater core in. And put the cap on because it is too loose. So what we do is we use this, people call it camper tape uh, or foam. And I got a few different sizes here to do a few different things. So first I'm going to put piece on the bottom and a piece like just two small pieces up here and I use a thicker one we do this because you do not want your heater core to flop around in there because if it does these tubes they rub up against the box itself and then you can wear a hole in it and you'll start leaking prematurely and no one likes premature leaking. We will uh, <laughs> keep it still in the heater box. So that'll keep it from moving up and down once we put the caps on and put it in there. Now we need to keep it from moving side to side. My little scissors, everybody makes fun of me. Okay, and so I'm gonna wipe this cap out. All right, so we'll set this in here. Oh, oh it's just the paper, we can take it off. The bottom of it will sit in this groove down here, this big groove. And there we go. And we're gonna take our cap. Set it on. There we go, snaps into place pretty good. And I kind of move it around to see if it's good or not. You try not to like have a, a lot of movement. A little movement's fine because it'll be against, but I'm gonna see how, what we have. And I have a little movement this way not so much movement going this way, which is good. And the movement in and out is pretty good. So I have a little bit of movement side to side. So what I'm gonna do is take the cap back off. And that would be along these edges right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit more foam on that to keep it from sliding. Throw the cap back on here. Now we just have a little bit of movement, which is pretty good. So, we're gonna go ahead and put our screws back on. All right, new heater core's in. One last thing. We're gonna go put, when, we, when you wanna put this back on your vehicle, we do wanna seal these edges where it goes into the inner fender 
and this piece here that wants to go into the, uh, the inner cab through the firewall because you don't want any air seeping through this. So again, we'll go to our tape, our foam tape, and we'll just cut us some pieces that will fit there. Now we've got the, the heater box all foamed up, ready to go uh, when it gets on the vehicle. Uh, the only thing I would suggest doing afterwards is after you mount this up, is to put a uh, bead of silicone, RTV, uh, seam sealer over the top of this so water wouldn't come down in. Um, other than that, that is a rebuilt Scout 2 heater box um, with a brand new Anything Scout blow motor and Anything Scout heater core. Which is... Look how it plants <laughs>